to sur- survive, right? Like, y- you can be making however the fuck much, but if you need that much to survive, you're not you're not going to fucking slack off. However, if you don't need, if you have much more than you need to survive, you're going to end up slacking at some point unless you are uh, what Nietzsche called the Ubermensch, like somebody who is willing to continue working hard and improving themselves or doing what the fuck ever just so for the sake of it. Difference between and, a CEO and a janitor. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and the thing is that, like, those people who do that, and uh, unfortunately, I think I am one of those people considering that, like, sometimes I'll just put in, like, a stupid amount of overtime during a day and, like, not even notice. Like, one day last week, I put in a 12-hour day without taking a lunch, and, like, I didn't notice until the night crew told me that they were getting ready to leave. Which well, isn't a bad trait to have, per se. No, they, no, but, they literally yeah. drop you in the woods with an axe, and you do nothing all day but chop down trees. Well, I'll, I'll yeah, be, yeah, real, there, you, there's you a lot understand. of us. There's a lot of us out here who do that, though. You know, what I mean, especially when you're young. You know, what I mean, like you'll spend yeah, a lot of, yeah. you'll spend a lot of time grinding out and working, handling your fucking business and shit. You know, when I was your age, like I'll be real, I was putting in 13, 14, 15 hours a fucking day, like it was nothing. And I'll be honest, like I used to fight not to have to fucking take a break. You know what I mean? Because I was like, I don't want to fucking have to be here an extra half hour or waste my time for a fucking half hour sitting around not doing shit and not getting fucking paid. You know what I mean? Like, that was something that always aggravated the fuck out of me. It was like, yo, why the fuck do I got to take a goddamn break? Like, yo, fuck a break. You know what I mean? The end of the day. So, all right. So, let's let's okay. let's go over let, let's go over some of this shit because I'm fucking recording this nonsense. All right. So, the mentality that... I have is like we were talking about we started off this conversation about like fucking dip and you know what I mean like the midwittery and shit and then like I went to like the atheist shit where I was like you know these atheists are basically fucking midwits who enjoy like literally stealing you know what I mean fucking like the thought of like a fucking little kid fucking having Santa Claus or a fucking Easter bunny from them. and they're the same people who used to like walk around outside and like sit here and like try to like fucking cough in front of smokers right so that like they could just bother people because like it aggravates them that somebody else does something that they don't fucking like and we were standing here going over this mentality and i wanted to address it because like i don't i don't really like the idea that they lie to us and bullshit us like all of us it don't matter who the fuck whether you're an atheist or a christian or you're fucking you know you're just a normal person or you they like we're lied to the whole way through school, the whole way through everything we've ever done in our lives. We've been fucking just straight lied to and bullshitted to. And that is something that I think we need to bring to the fore more often and just start really, really correcting all these fucking lies and calling out everybody who fucking uses them to try to argue with motherfuckers about nonsense Right. And especially like on larger platforms, like I was talking about, like Jimmy Dore and Bill, uh, Jimmy, or I was watching Jimmy Dore and he had a Bill Maher versus um, Glenn, uh, Glenn Greenwald, who sat here and, you know, I mean, Glenn Greenwald got upset because Bill Maher was like, oh, these fucking Muslims are electing the Muslim Brotherhood and all this other shit. And Glenn Greenwald was like, well, you know, fucking Christians are killing, or used to kill people all over the fucking time. Or, you know, I mean, what about the fucking Jews in goddamn Palestine and their fucking, you know, their apartheid state that they have and all the people they murder on a regular basis there? And in having like that conversation to go, all right, well, uh, the fucking uh, the Israel Palestine thing, like yes, we can fucking write that off to the religion, right? But like with the ideology of Christians murdering like millions of people, like or thousands of people, even you have to go back a thousand years to get to there. You know, what I mean, like the yeah, like people go like, oh, what about the Salem witch trials? Like, what was it like fucking fourteen goddamn people in the entire thing ever? And like in one the of 1600s? them, hundreds. Yeah, and, it, and one of them was a dude, right? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And this is something that's brought up with, like, feminists and motherfucking these individuals who are just angry at a system. And we were sitting here talking about how, like, 
these fucking people who go to college and, you know what I mean? Like fucking these college professors and the females who, you know what I mean? Want to live their lives and like have like, you know what I mean? Eight miles of cock ran through them feel very stifled by a suburban <laughs> fucking life and shit. This <laughs> <laughs> is so right. You know what I mean? Bitches. I've, I've made you and said at one point, I am the daughters of the witches who did it burn. Right, right, right. You took that rod. <laughs> I didn't spare that rod. <laughs> like, you spared the rod, you spoiled a child, you know. But, like, ultimately, like, the way human beings are supposed to live their lives, you know what I mean, is, you know what I mean, in a traditional sense, right? Like, that's how human beings are supposed to live. And, like, people get upset because, like, they came from the suburbs, which is basically a nursery for, like, middle-class white people, and it's just supposed to be a safe place to raise your kids so you don't have to worry about them, you know what I mean, being in danger, you know what I mean, of like fucking getting gaffled by a wild animal or getting, you know what I'm saying, like robbed by some fucking, you know what I mean, immigrant in the fucking city or a poor person or a hobo or whatever it is. You want your kids to be safe and have a good life, so you move them to the fucking suburbs. But when they, these kids grow up, they end up like, oh, man, it was fucking terrible and da-da-da-da and all this other shit. But it doesn't... <sighs> I don't think anybody's really having honest conversations about this. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's kind of like how fucked up a kid would be if they grew up in Disneyland. <laughs> oh, God. Surrounded by, by, surrounded by Mickey Mouse, Pluto, and Goof all t tending to his needs. And he can't really recognize anything else other than those uh, people in suits. Well, I have a question, though. Do you get unlimited Disney bucks? Because, like, you would eat really well. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, <laughs> yeah, but then you but then you grow up and have a thing for Minnie Mouse. I'll fucking get up completely. Well, I like it can't be any worse than Floyd, but you know, I mean, um, <laughs> I'm saying though, like, could you imagine like an unlimited supply of dipping dots when he was a kid? You know, what I mean, like, your know, fucking shit would be ridiculous. Like, I don't know, I've never I been, to, I mean, it. I've never been to Disney World, I'll be honest with you. You know, what I mean, like, fucking, there, there, yeah, like, I, I've been to Hershey Park mad times and like. It's like fifteen dollars for a cheesesteak, and it's not even like a good cheesesteak. Like they like, bro, like, like yo, fucking cheesesteak shit ain't that difficult to buy. But like they get like really like, like actual steak that's chopped up, and it, that's not how a cheesesteak works. Like, bro, because it's too thick. I mean, it's a good sandwich and shit, but it's not you know fucking worth fifteen dollars. But anyway, right? You know, so your your PA saw it coming out right now <laughs> that sounds like a good cheese steak to me maybe your PA is just going out you got higher standards than that shit it's right like yo man look like your PA we have like it's it's a different breed all like if you, you gotta like chop it up on the joint and like you know what I mean like it's it's all like like light and airy the steak is and then like you put the sauce on and this shit right you know you throw That's the provolone or the mozzarella this is right? a pizza <laughs> yeah <laughs> right like, man, that's not pizza. You gotta get pizza in New York. It's cooked in a brick oven and shit, right? And you know, forget about it, whatever, right? But like, got a goo, right? Uh, so, bada bing, bada boo. I mean, like you know, but like the mentality of these these individuals, right? And like, I had this thought earlier, like, yo, midwits are basically like the fucking foot soldiers of the cathedral, right? And I feel like that's exactly what it is. Like, they're people who excel in academia, and then, like, they're literally built to go to college. You know what I mean? And then, like, they do well in college, and they come out and they become, like, fucking managers or, like, fucking Burger King or some shit, right? Like, they're literally, like, yeah. that's what they are. Like, they become government bureaucrats, you know what I mean, who, like, have a lifetime position of, like, fucking pushing papers between them. So, basically, uh, it's basically guys like me and uh, Psycho. I don't. Well, Psycho has a skilled trade. Yeah, Psycho uh, does. Uh, Psycho's a fucking locksmith, uh, right? You know what yeah, I mean? that's, like, a, that's a skilled trade. That's a highly valuable skilled trade. Yeah, that. Yeah, no, yeah, that's, that's that's not. That's, no, 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 I'm talking about like people who go to college, right? They come out and they get jobs either in college or in, in fucking the government or in like some corporation like midway in it and they just sit there and stay there their entire fucking lives underneath the fluorescent lights in a fucking cubicle or maybe like a small office and they spend their whole lives just fucking typing out TPS reports. He's talking a, about uh, HR. I have a theory explained. HR. This. Now, I might be full of shit. Um, I said this before. College and education of itself does not teach a child how to think. 
No, 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 take that back. Not to teach them to think, but how to think. It doesn't teach them critical thinking skills. It doesn't teach them to think outside of a box. Mm. So that's why academia is perfect for people, like you said, who would be middle management. Well, it's the same paperwork every day. It's the same routine every day. There's no complex issues that they themselves have to solve. Well, the government, it's like, well, the, like, here's the thing. Corporations have literally taken on the government structure. Right. True. You know what I mean? So like it's like you can literally like slide from school to college to, you know what I'm saying, any corporation. And there's not going to be a lot of like uh, fucking, you know, like uh, friction as far as stuff's really concerned. And so this is where like my mentality of like how I see the cathedral comes in is because like you go, all right, well, you know, you go from the motherfucking you go from a school which is you know what i'm saying a government institution which is completely like a false environment to college which is another government institution which is completely structured in a false environment to a corporation which is another false environment which is you know what i'm saying fucking structured in the same manner right and that's basically like it has it, it, it's all the same shit and it's why like they indoctrinate these kids with the same mentalities Right, where they have to like stand, yo, Neffle, nigga, stop fucking typing or mute yourself the fuck out. Right? All right. <laughs> right. And so, like, they have like the same exact mentalities because, like, all of them are required to have the same fucking courses and shit. You know what I mean? Like, the liberal arts courses what? that, like, kids take in college, you have to remember, were made for, like, royalty, right? And nobility. So that yep. these individuals had the ability to stand here and, you know, I mean, like rule over individuals in a benevolent manner. That's what it was made for. Well, OK, then um, will this reference what TK said earlier? Okay. It, it might have not been TK. It might have been the other guy, the peppy avatar, um, depression bear or bipolar bear. OK. All right. Um, now, OK, you can teach a monkey how to press a button. Does the monkey understand why the press? That was ad hoc. Why, why, that was ad hoc who said ad hoc. that shit. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. ad hoc then. Then would that monkey understand why that monkey presses a button? I can teach a horse how to count. But does that horse understand why it's counting? Mm. Or what it's counting? Well, again, you know what I'm saying? We get back to, like, the mentality of, all right, so in the 1950s, like, only, like, 14 or 15% of all people inside of the United States went to college. Right. And today it's around like 40 to 50 percent of all people are going to college. Right. So those 14 percent back in the day that were going to college were like nobility. You know, I mean, they were individuals who, you know, were like doctors, lawyers. You know, I mean, individuals who like were like literally rich and, you know, just went to college because like, you know, one day they might take over their daddy's business or whatever it is. And in doing so. They would take, you know, I mean, like a, a, a course of liberal arts that basically, you know, I mean, taught you how to be a leader and think as a benevolent motherfucking nobility to the people. Right. And these individuals here, like the people who are teaching the courses and the people who are like part of it as a, or like the individuals, like the mentality of these individuals are of the upper crust of our society. Right. And so. Therefore, they have this mentality of being like a savior to society, whereas, you know, I mean, they really had then they, you know, I mean, haven't ever left academia. And it's it's a, I don't know, I'm, I'm losing my ability to motherfucking like stay here and like I'm reaching the top of my TK takeover, nigga, because like, I can't I'm, I'm at the top of my vocabulary. Man. OK, so there, there there are a couple different things at like places where you can branch off from here or keep going. OK, um, go ahead. The, the number one that I would probably go with is the fact that uh, how, because of the way it is that uh, college and universities, these things are education for the next class of uh, aristocrats, management, that type of thing. However it is that you teach them ends up being how the next generation of leadership in the corporate structure and government structure or court system, yada, yada, yada. That's how they think. Mm -mm -mm. Yo, yo, can, can we touch on, can you touch on the managerial fucking uh, revolution due to the fucking um, service sector? You know what I mean? Moving, moving from oh, industrial yeah, yeah, to yeah, service. Yeah. That, that'll, that'll probably like piece this together a little bit.
All right, so I, I can actually add in a personal anecdote here where uh, I got a STEM degree and then I went into an actual practical field as far as uh, manufacturing. And I have had a hell of a time stitching together those two experiences because we have a service sector oriented uh, education system at this moment because the service sector, the government and corporations all primarily deal with people and not things. And so as all of the power structures in our society have become more people oriented, that has made them less oriented towards what is real and more oriented into towards what they can use to leverage other people. And so hmm. there's basically some feminization of society. Well, no, no. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, part of let me, it. let me, let me address this real quick too, though, right? So, like, with the idea of the the idea of the managerial revolution, right? You know, um, what happened was is that industry, or the original individuals who were like basically the nobility of this country, were like landowners, right? And people who you know I mean, were agriculturally based you know what i'm saying and then industry kind of moved in but industry stayed very kind of rudimentary like it was shit that you know what i mean like a farmer would understand how to you know what i mean like fucking run a uh a, a mid-size factory that you know what i mean was steam powered and produced fucking plows or some shit right but once it got into a much more technical space, it required like their workers and their managers to know more than the individual who actually owned it would. Right. So these individuals had to be trained in fucking colleges to stand here and get these technical things. Now, as you know, what I'm saying industry grew more individuals, you know, what I'm saying like it had like kind of like the same amount of individuals would actually like go to college because the upper echelons of an industrial society don't require a shit ton of motherfucking education, like for managing, uh, you know, what I'm saying like basic people and shit. But once we got to the point where it was like we switched over to a service sector economy and we moved all of our fucking shit away from, you know, I mean, industrial uses, the individuals going to college stood here and ended up being a vast larger piece because we went into more like design and, you know what I'm saying, uh, fucking like financial services and fucking uh, psychology, uh, psychological services and advertising services. And these degrees aren't hard sciences for a lot of them. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of math involved in some of them, but like a lot of them are just like, you know, I mean, having to manage more fucking trade deals and more fucking uh, do a lot of like fucking handshaking type of stuff and then deal with people and, you know, I mean, deal with the psychology of individuals across the world and the international fucking trade type of deal. So there was a lot more softer sciences involved. And our education system kind of evolved with it. It went from this industrial system, which is why, like, the original high schools and, you know, I mean, elementary schools and middle schools that we have are all, like, run on, like, a bell system. Like, in between the period, like, you know, the bell would ring and then, like, you would move to the next thing. That was, you know, I mean, to train individuals in a factory sense to where, like, you know, when the factory whistle blew, it was lunchtime. The factory whistle, you know what I mean, fucking started up, like, fucking, when the factory whistle in the morning, man, it's time to go to work, right? And it was just to orient you into these type of things, these little small details. Now, some of this is still in school. I don't even know, like, if fucking... Like, do they still have bells in school or not, or fucking whistles or whatever? But like now, you know, I, I mean, think I think they have. I think they have mainly bells. Yeah, I mean, like, you, like it used to be a whole different thing, right? But now it's on this level of where, like, you know, I mean, they're not producing individuals for industrial use. They're putting they're using, they're producing individuals for academic use. You know, I mean, to go into more fucking soft centered fucking office type of jobs you know what i mean where they're going to be like fucking data entry and you know what i mean uh fucking call centers uh fucking human resources because like that's what we do in america much more than we do you know i mean like some of the largest employers in the country are like healthcare providers and shit rather than being industrial pro industrial producers and that's that's kind of the mental of where it's at oh and Walmart. oh uh how long do you think it's gonna it's gonna take for that to change? Hmm. It's automation is just also gonna be a thing. Well, well, go first ahead, go of ahead, all, TK. automation is is not all it's cracked up to be. 
Uh, I mean, when it comes to like data entry jobs and for like customer service jobs. Oh, oh, definitely. Like middle management is the easiest thing to automate. So like those are the first jobs that are just gone. That and secretaries. Oh, you're saying um, you're saying doing payroll isn't is fairly easy, and <laughs> and, and inventory as well. It's all just kind of be automated yeah. on an algorithm. You know, I mean, a lot of companies are already using uh, it. Yeah, but you're still going to need people to go into the warehouse, load shit in, take it out for the most part. No, uh, no, we, no. Like yo, I've actually, I've been, for- I've, I've been in warehouses where legitimately robots run everything. They load the trucks, they pick the orders, the whole nine. They unload trucks. They put them in fucking yeah, place to pick the. I've seen all this already. Like they do it in like a lot of um, like uh, fucking beer manufacturers do that shit. And actually, some of the first seen, people uh, to use automated trucks as a whole was Coors out in fucking Colorado. Well, I've seen yeah, chicken yeah, plants because... do the same thing. Like in slaughterhouses, there's completely automated chicken plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but. Uh... Well, I, yeah, I, was, I was letting you go, man. I was letting you go. Go ahead. Do your thing. <laughs> right, 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 right. I, I actually kind of lost my train of thought. So I'm you said automation, automation isn't all it's cracked up to be. Like we touched on this oh, in the oh, last live stream yeah, about yeah. like the resource curse for automation and shit, right? Where like, you know, if you can right. have like fucking, you know, a thousand people, you know, me fucking writing out or like, you know, whatever, whatever it is, a thousand people write an algorithm that, you know, I mean, allows individuals to stand here and do a fucking job that used to take, you know, like fucking 50,000 people to do or 100,000. You know, I mean, it gets to the point of where, like, you know, there's too many more fucking individuals on the wagon and not enough people fucking pulling it. And then what do you do with all those people? Because it creates political instability and shit. Right, right. Uh, My main point on automation is always that uh, a lot of people confuse the actual profitability of automation and the ability for us to actually automate some things for uh cheap credit because a lot of the times what people think is profitable and viable because of automation is only really doable because you were able to dump a stupid amount of resources on training a robot to do a specific thing which yeah it it can work out Especially if you have really cheap credit, if you can borrow at zero percent, you can make a lot of things work out. But that that's not always going to be the case. Uh, well, can the can other I, thing can I, is, can I say like you know I mean like the idea of UBI right? <laughs> you, 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 right, you, that, I, that is you, a terrible one. Yo, I punched I punched a dude in the face with this one on Discord a little while back. I said, "Here, you want to see an example of UBI? Look at the ghettos in America." <laughs> oh, welfare. You got a point. You have welfare. You have a damn good point with that. Right, like yo, like yeah, if you want to uh, see UBI, like bro, like real shit. Look at the ghettos in America and see how the hell they run. You know, what I mean, they go, oh well, you know, those people are impoverished. I'm like, bro, like let's keep this a hundred. All right, let's keep this all the way one hundred. Tomorrow, my baby's mom's taking me fucking grocery shopping. Do you know why? Do you know why this is? Oh, food stamps or anything like that. Yeah, she has five thousand dollars worth of food stamps on her fucking card, and she has no way of using it. Holy fuck! Did you say five thousand dollars? Yeah, grand of food stamps. Shit. Yeah. Right. Like the av- Like yo, I'm not fucking with you. Like yo, single women in this country get a obscene amount of welfare. And I explain this to people like in, in like on, on Discord calls and shit where like I'm talking to them and they're overseas and they're like, you know, America doesn't have this. I'm like, bro, legitimately yeah, like your single moms, like a single mom on section eight legitimately is usually getting about $50,000 worth of fucking benefits a year. As you, you don't have to be a single mom. I know chicks who have no kids, haven't worked in two, three years and get benefits. Well, I'm saying like the amount of money as a single mom gets is like 50 racks a fucking year. Right, like how's yeah. I didn't know that I didn't know food stamps for a older like that. There's, unless they gave her five thousand a fucking month. Nah, like yo, she just they they've been giving her a shit ton since COVID started, and she can't spend it all. They're giving her like fucking like eleven hundred dollars a month in fucking food stamps. You she should yeah, just yeah, turn yeah, that shit over you it. every fucking week, man. You paying support and shit. <laughs> I feel you, right? So like you know, I'm like shit. She's like, I got five thousand dollars in food stamps. If you need some food, let me know. And I'm like. 
I can save some money on some groceries. I kind of feel like I should take advantage of this. You know what I mean? And that's I'm what dude, I'm doing. Even more than that, Tom, like you and me, we're, well, we're, we're criminals. Yeah. <laughs> we know this shit works. We can sell that shit for three fucking grand. Three, four fucking grand. You know, we can sit just around and sell that shit. I can you still buy, uh, can you still buy uh, beer with food stamps, but you can no. still not buy... No. Uh... no, not in PA. Not in PA. You can't buy... Like, in PA, you can't buy fucking beer. You can't buy, like, cleaning supplies, laundry detergent, soap, diapers, wipes. But... You know, I mean, that's why, like, in, in, Prince, in Prince George's, Maryland, they literally have a tied pot. They have a tied economy, right, where they're trading heroin for motherfucking laundry detergent and shit. Oh, shit. I, um, I, I can see that on a barter system being a fair trade. Like you got five, but I got five bucks of heroin. I want ten bucks of fucking laundry detergent. Yup. <laughs> you know, I mean, because like yo, legitimately, like yo, you can actually like run a fucking underground economy off of fucking laundry detergent, and everybody uses Tide in the hood. Like everybody loves fucking Tide. So like you are able to stand here and run that in the hood because like fucking everybody on Section Eight and welfare can't buy fucking Tide, you know what I mean? And they can just use their cash assistance to motherfucking back that shit up on the other side, you know what I mean? Like it was like oh I got this fucking Tide, you know what I mean? Like fucking you pay me, you know what I mean? So much for it or whatever it is, and they're just stealing skids of Tide and trading it for fucking drugs, you know? Or like they're tra- yeah they're trading they're, they're using the Tide to trade for fucking drugs and shit. Yeah, 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 fucking, and then, like, fucking, you know I mean, these individuals are, like, fucking selling the Tide for more fucking cash and shit. Yo, it's, it's fucking some crazy thing. Like, now, like, I, I don't know if it's still this way. This was, like, a, like three or four years ago. But, like, legit, they were standing here. They had, like, all the Tide in a fucking store in the back under, in, like, a fucking safe, right? Because motherfuckers were just fucking ripping all, ripping it the fuck off and running out of the store and shit. Oh, so it's, like, leaves oh. and fucking do-rags here. They got that shit behind lock and key. Yeah, well, you know, whatever it is in your area that fucking goes quick. Like, legitimately, I tried to go buy some fucking headphones today at fucking Walmart, and they had every headphone in the goddamn store behind motherfucking lock and key and shit. Oh, it's just like my Walmart, man. You have to find yeah. some fucking loser, some teenager in, in a blue shirt and be like, I, I got to buy some earbuds. Yeah, I was, I was like, dude, like, because, like, I'm missing the actual bud off of my fucking one side of this motherfucker. I was like, fuck it, I'll rock it the rest of the week because they didn't have any wired fucking head, headphones. But anyway, right, like, yeah, so, you know, that's kind of the mentality that, you know, I mean, I'm trying to get to is, like, like, fucking none of this shit is going to work with automation long term because, like, human beings have to have something to do. They have to have somewhere to go. They have to have something that gives them purpose. And, you know this shit is the idea of like basing your whole society off of you know fucking some fucking like science shit is it's not a positive way to live in general and robbing motherfuckers are like they're religious robbing individuals of their religion while you're fucking standing here trying to take away their jobs it's probably not a good idea in in the end of the game, end of the day you know what i mean that's that's how you get Sooner revolt. Later. You take away their culture, you take away their livelihood. That's how you get revolt. Yeah, that's how you end up with hardline religions. Yeah, you got like yeah. Uh, what's gonna be the uh, what's gonna be the American Christian equivalent of a hardline religion? That's gonna make uh, evangelicalism look like uh, look like hippies. American American oh, yeah. jihadism is shit. hippies. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, they're they're gonna end up look at making the Muslim Brotherhood look like bitches. Not even gonna lie. Well, I've been screaming white Sharia for like two years now, so let's bring it. <laughs> I'm with it. I'm with it. You know me. I'm with it. We we can let's put fix these bitches this. in trash bags. Let's put these bitches in fucking trash bags. This is fucking. We can do it. fix this peacefully by just importing all of the women from the rest of the world. Well, like, okay, so here's, I agree with you, right? Because if there's an excess of women, you know what I'm saying? Like, the fucking lives get better for men. But, all right, so here's here's the mentality, right? And this is what, like, I was getting, this is where I was at, like, on the way up, on the way back home. It's that we're not having any conversations about anything, honestly, right? All the conversations we're having is, you know, fucking, like, this half-assed mentality about shit that really is detrimental at fucking best you know what i mean to what the fuck we're doing it's we gotta have some simple really basic conversations about things and we can't do it because everybody's fucking lying nobody wants to tell the truth man 
And I think we we can. TK, man, yo, uh, like you were saying, like we like the people don't want to hear the fucking truth. I think they do, but like it's just gonna take a while to sink that shit the fuck into their heads. No, I I think what's gonna have to happen is that after the truth is forced on them by getting shoved up their rear end, they will eventually either accept it or you know hate the world for a while and then accept it because like at, at some point in time the results of ignoring reality come home to roost and unfortunately what what's happening right now is that 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 coming home to roost is being used as a uh, blunt instrument by which certain people are uh, they're wielding backlash as a political weapon right now um, on multiple levels, which is unfortunate, but kind of inevitable at this point because like because everyone has been lying for so long, nobody really knows who to blame, even if it's blatantly obvious, right? Right. And I mean, like, yo, the bitch is, is like, you know, there's like always three sides of this motherfucking shit. You know what I'm saying? There's our side, their side and the truth. And what I'm trying to do, like with the channel in general, is really just bring in general truths out, like as a whole. Right. Where I go, OK, this is what this is and this is why this is happening. This is where the fuck this came from. And this is, you know what I'm saying? Like what we can do to fix it or, you know what I mean? Like, yo, we can just continue to ignore the fucking problem. You know, it's, it's up to y'all. And I really, I want to have like these really basic conversations about what's going on in an honest manner. Right. And then go like, all right, so this is what really happened. You know, I mean, this is what we're being told and this is what you were told. Right. Because like out of all the like so because like the right wing has their fucking talking points and narratives about shit. You know, I mean, then the left wing has their talking points and narratives about shit. And then geography and actual history has their talking points and narratives about shit. Right. Like I was um, (laughs) funny how that works. Yeah, I was I was sitting here. I was listening to a video today. Right. And. Like, I never really listen to things that are cathartic for me, right? I don't like the mentality of constantly being told that I'm right. I like to be challenged in my mentals, right? So... You like to sip out your echo chamber. Yeah, I fucking... I hate echo chambers. I, I, don't, I don't want a hug box. I want to be... I want to fucking have an opportunity to have somebody go, like, you're wrong, Tom, and you're a fucking asshole. Like, if I'm wrong, fucking tell me, because, like, I'm fucking fully behind fucking changing my mental. But I was listening to this video tonight about um, the revenge of geography, right? Where like a dude literally fucking came on in the first, like some of the first words out of his mouth were a lot of these countries shouldn't be countries, right? <laughs> you know, I'm just standing there like, you know, I'm like, like I, like I, I'm like, yo, I literally like, and this is, a, this is a guy who's talking in front of the fucking council for foreign relations, right? And I'm, I'm standing here and I'm like, I come to these conclusions without listening to these people because like, I just do some basic fucking research and just immediately lead to this, right? Cause like, True, like the Afghani <laughs> argument, because of this a system of a bunch of tribal people, different, completely different cultures. Yeah, like for instance, um, they were talking about um, uh, fucking ancient Carthage, right? <coughs> Excuse me, I think it's called. Ooh, I, as I think in it's, like Hannibal. Yeah, I think it's called Ionia now, right? And basically, it's a country that has always been connected with Sicily and Italy, right? Because like Carthage, Rome, that type of thing. And this country is naturally an actual country, right? Because historically it was a country. Iran is naturally a country because historically it was a country. It was fucking Persia, right? You know, I mean, Turkey is naturally a country because it's fucking, you know, the ancient fucking you know, empire, you know, I mean, the fucking Turkestan, right? Like all these countries are nominally actual real countries. But then you go to like places like Libya and, you know, I mean, fucking Iraq. And he literally goes, Libya, Iraq, Syria, right? these countries that should not be fucking countries because like the bottom half like portions of them legitimately don't belong to the other right <laughs> like they belong to other people like they're whole I, different I, I mean, i'm pretty sure majority like libya like iraq uh like iraq lebanon and syria should should just go back to being mesopotamia 
Well, like it, there no. are former Soviet bloc states that Stalin intentionally divided up so that if they ever tried to rebel, they would also have a civil war. Mm. Right. I mean, but like the thing is, is like a lot of these things were drawn by the Brits, a lot of these fucking geographical lines. Right. Like, for instance, you know, what I'm saying like Syria has like one population at the top of it and then a giant population of Sunnis at the bottom of it. Right. Iraq has a bunch of Sunnis at the top of it. You know what I mean? A bunch of Shiites in the bottom and fucking Baathists in the middle. Right. And it's like these countries should not be fucking countries. Right. Like Saudi Arabia. No, that explains a lot of the Indian <laughs> fighting too. Yeah. That's kind of the deal. Right. And like Egypt has always been a country. Right. So Egypt's fine. But like, you know, and this is the mental that I came to just doing some very basic fucking research and having these type of talks of going like, oh, fucking like geography matters. Right. Because like where people live and like who they are as a culture is important. And having individuals who want two different things inside of one fucking country and they're not, you know, I mean, like some really liberal individuals who can go, oh, we can come to a compromise. They're motherfuckers who are hardline will blow each other to fuck up if they don't get their fucking way. You know what I mean? And like you know, having yeah. having some basic conversations with the American people just like that. That really simple conversation of going like, oh, these fucking countries need redrawn. Why is it that it's so difficult for us to have very, very simple, simple conversations like this? Why? Now, that brings up a very interesting, because people don't like having direct conversations and people don't like hearing the truth, if it's good or bad. It would neither be personal or micro or the macro. People don't like hearing the truth. Now, it's interesting that you bring up the United States because should we balkanize at this point? Well, we are. Right? I mean, here, here's, here's the crazy thing. This dude was talking about how, like, Texas is probably going to become part of Mexico, but not because, like, the Mexicans are moving there. It's because, like, recently the Mexicans liberalized their fucking, um, their, uh, fucking ownership, uh, ability of their fucking petro, uh, their petrochemicals and shit. And so now Texas is becoming much more invested into the oil and shale production in Mexico. See, now that, see, that makes a lot more sense to me because I would imagine that. Texas, being right there next to Mexico, would have more in common in Mexico than they would for me, say, in Indiana. Right. You know what I mean? And, like, Texas is probably, Texas, Louisiana, and Oklahoma may end up, like, fucking balkanizing and becoming more Mexican. They said there's probably going to be, a, in the next 30 years, you know and I mean, like, 50 or 60 percent of Americans are probably going to end up speaking Spanish as a second language just because the Mexicans are going to become a much more important part of our lives. We need to start working on that trash no state. I feel you. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like I feel where you are. Look, right? I, I, I don't mind it. Other oh, people but, have uh, their but, homelands, but like I gotta have my whole land of white trash, damn it. Uh, I'm with oh, your man. ideology. I gotta tell you, bro. I'm behind that ideology too, man. I'm a Spanish speaker, and uh, you know, I, I, I know how to do business in the traditional state and in the Spanish world. Well, don't we'll do need, that we'll stuff. We'll take you know, <laughs> uh, <'cause>... Puerto Abanos. <laughs> like, like, where's the guy? like, like, Mas Papas Fritas, por favor. Pantalones. El gato en el pantalones, right? Like, yo. <laughs> but, like, yeah, but, you know, yeah, well. like, that's, I mean, like, there's, there's a lot of parts of, you know, I mean, the world that, like, we're just straight not being told any type of, like, actual, like, fucking truth about. You know, we're like, we're standing here like, oh, like, oh, this is a giant Muslim problem. Like, it's not a giant Muslim problem. It's that like, yo, there's like massive amounts of different people all lumped in together that don't make any fucking sense. Right. So basically to quote the offspring, you got to keep them separated. Like Shiites and Sunni, we all know they don't get along. Yeah. yeah they hate each other with a passion. Right. You know, and like, and you could probably you could... better for the whole region if they had their own countries they can call their own. Yes. Be better for the world <laughs> in history if they had their own shit, you know. And that's that's kind of uh, where the mentality is as a whole. So like, that's you know, I mean, that's kind of like where I'm getting to with having like some very simple conversations about things. Like COVID is never going to go away. 
right? And like, no matter what the fuck we do, how much inoculations and masks and whatever, you'll never eliminate COVID now because like the South African strain is transmissible to fucking rats and fucking mice now. Like, so any place that's populated that has like a rodent population inside of a city, you're never going to fucking get rid of COVID. It'll be with us for perpetuity of time at this point. So basically every city, every town in existence ever. Yeah. It's like the cold. Mm. So we need to have that basic conversation and go, well, like, this is what it's hitting for now. You know, I mean, like, I understand, like, and, like, we need to talk about how our media works. Like, why it is that, like, advertising is dumb. You know, I mean, like, a cable subscription should pay for a group of channels, right? And it should be a la carte. Like, it should be like, I want this channel, this channel, this channel, and this channel, and I'm going to pay you this much a month, and there's no advertising on it. And the news should work on that way. That way, they don't have to sell advertising and worry about, you know what I mean, getting eyes on them. They can just sell fucking subscriptions with fucking cable news. You know what I mean? And they don't, like, it has, and it has to be this. And it's a really simple way to fix it. Like, because all of cable should work this way. There's no reason that there should be 20 minutes of fucking commercials in a half-hour fucking program. Like, it's, it's, fuck, it's fucking dumb. Right? No, I'm not disagreeing with you. It's just been so long since I paid for cable. I feel yeah, yeah. I, I have not paid for cable in a long ass time. Majority of my entertainment comes from YouTube or YouTube, Pluto TV, uh, and uh, unquestionable sites <laughs> for <Hold> anime. <laughs> okay, sketchy, sketchy, sketchy Russian sites of ad block. I gotcha. Right, right. I'm, I'm saying, though, like, legitimately, like, there's no reason why, like, the cable news who everybody fucking receives should still have fucking advertising on it. Like, there's none. Like, you should, like, there's fucking... There's no reason why local news should be scripted. Well, there, there's reason for to script some of it, you know what I mean? But, like, there's no reason it should have, like, a dialogue that's fucking dictated by a corporate fucking policy. You know, and it shouldn't, like, the news should never have to worry about ratings. Right. Like if you're interested in knowing what's going on, you should turn it on. If you're not, then fucking don't worry about it. Like, you know, if there's a major event happening and you know what's happening because everybody has social media of some sort. Like we have I have discord. You know, I mean, like a lot of motherfuckers have Facebook or fucking Twitter or whatever. So if there's some major shit, you fucking know it. I mean, for instance, like, you know, if there's a flood outside. I mean, I bet you that water creeping up into your house is something that'll let you know that that's happening. You know what I mean? True, but you seen these um, dragon New Jersey lately? The what, what, what? You see all the flood damage from New Jersey? From Hurricane whatever? Yeah, look, you have to understand something. All right, I live next to New Jersey. All right, and right now we are all under flood stage and mad shit's underwater. I drove through fucking see- eight foot of water the other fucking day. You were on stream with me when I did it. True, but I've been on a lot of streams lately. My memory is the best. I did not know about this. So I'm just <laughs> right. Like it's, yo, it's not happening outside my door. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it happened outside my door. Like I had a fucking, I had my sub pump on for two goddamn days, pumping the basement out. Right. Like, yeah, this is, you know, this welcome to fucking, welcome to the fucking Northeast coast. You know what I mean? It's like you're living near an ocean's a pain in the dick. And every time like fucking New Orleans get hit, we get fucking bombed next. Like, yeah, like fucking my river, the river's at fucking flood stage out here at the moment. You know what I mean? Like shit is fucked up. It rained for like three fucking days straight. It was the wettest day in the history of Pennsylvania ever, right? And, you know, I mean, you know, that happens. So, like, when that shit happens, we all paid attention to the news because, like, you know, it told us what happened. Not me. I know what you mean. It just sounds like I live in a burnt and boring state. We just have, a, right now, gang shootings and tornadoes. Well, you have That's tornadoes. You got tornadoes. We don't ever have tornadoes here. You know, you get, you get, you get effects from fucking hurricanes. <laughs> well, yeah, we, get... we, we, have like, we have like scorching heat and dust storms. Well, we also, well, we have tornadoes sometimes, you know, I mean, depending on what part of the, you know, I mean, area you're in. Like, there was a tornado that touched down a couple miles from here, <laughs> right? But, like, you know, it's, Ugh. I've never seen a tornado myself. I've seen the damage. Like, I was, um, when I was living uh, over in um, fucking Perry County at one point, right, there was a legit, I, there was a dude whose house. Right. This guy, like he probably touched kids or something because God hated him. A tornado just (laughs) touched down on his house and he had like 
he had two trees in his front yard, right? The one tree yeah. fell over towards the street, and when it did so, it lifted up his driveway <laughs> and flipped his car over. Now, as it fell down, it pulled down the power lines and fucking like put them in like and fucking fell onto his truck on that was parked on the street. One and then as this happened, the other tree also fell down and went into his roof on his house. He lost his house and both his cars at the same time, <laughs> and both the trees out of his front yard. And he was, it was the only thing damaged in the whole neighborhood, right? The tornado just touched down there. Like, God hated tornado. that dude. It's like, yeah, it's like, a ta- it's like a tactile cruise missile from God. Mm. <laughs> Damn. Damn. My like God, like, like God reached they, his finger they... down and said, fuck you, nigga. Like, you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like legit though. Like, and here's a weird thing though. Like, that guy gave me a ride when my truck broke down, like fucking like a month later. Like, (laughs) wasn't that bad of a dude? I don't know what the fuck. I think he was a homosexual though, so it's a possibility. Like, he did something bad. I don't know. Well, you know, that's what they get for taking away the fucking rainbow. Mm. You don't take the rainbow away from God. (laughs) Yeah, I feel you. But again, you know what I mean? Like, yo, it's. You know, there, there's better ways of doing things, but we don't have any of these conversations, right? You know, I mean, like, I'm trying to, like, rationally have these arguments without, you know, I mean, like, being, like, a partisan of the left or the right or whatever it is, right? Because, like... No, right? It's just that people tend to look for figureheads who just happen to wear the expensive suit, uh, the the $35 haircut, and making six figures on a dime sell, selling these, uh, these self-help books on Amazon. People don't turn to guys like us for answers to know what's going on. They want to turn to a guy like fucking, like fucking, uh, Jordan Peterson. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, Jordan Peterson, guys like, uh, Crystal Ball. Like Dave Rubin. Crystal Ball, Ball. fucking that, um, cigar guy or whatever. You know what I mean? Fucking Kyle Kalinsky, uh, Tim uh, Poole, right? Uh, let's see who else, uh, I, I forgot his name, but Ron, it's like, uh, oh yeah, Tucker Carlson, Ron Burgundy, Ron Tucker Burgundy. Carlson, <laughs> Carlson, <laughs> Ron fucking Burgundy, <laughs> we turned the Ron Burgundy for some answers, we yeah. can use the Ron Burgundy right now, <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> fought bears, <laughs> like, a, <laughs> like a Bruce Almighty, um, <laughs> Steve Corral, uh, they, people usually turn t- People usually turn to those guys who have the clock to give them answers because they really don't want to start having to talk conversations for themselves. Well, I think what the SSP way is trying to say here is that people don't want to direct away from the status quo because the answers and yeah. solutions is, is a direction away from the status quo. You, you, It's like the fear of the dark. People are really scared of hard truths. Is They're like children in the dark. They can't see. They can't hear. And everything was within touch and reach from them. That's all they know. It's the fear of the unknown. And that's going against the status quo. And that really gets people fucking scared. Yeah, and the bitches, we've been lied to about everything forever, right? So, like, telling the truth is yeah. a very difficult thing in the end of the day, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Because, like, yo, when everything you know is a fucking lie and just bullshit, Right, like we brought up earlier about like fucking, you know, what I mean, like how many people died in the Inquisition, and you can go on Wikipedia and like they added it up. It's like four thousand people in four hundred years, and you go like in the past ten years, more people got shot in Chicago, right? And you go, all this shit that we've been taught our whole lives is garbage. It's all partisan yeah. fuckery. Free trade isn't about fucking capitalism. Free trade's about more fucking like. <laughs> like it was the defense policy to fight the Soviets, right? You know, it's just like all of this is complete and utter horseshit. And just, we've been completely lied to. Like critical race theory is a way of explaining like the de- how the deindustrialization fucking affected black people inside of the inner cities who moved there to enjoy any industrial fucking jobs and got fucking trapped there when we shipped all our fucking manufacturing overseas, right? Like this is the fucking problem. Right. And this is this is these are the issues that we don't have conversations about because we don't want to have like some really hard, real truths about things. You know what I mean? And I go like, yo, my channel is full of information that just goes here. 
I'm going to hand this to you. I'm going to drop it on you. You can listen to it and talk to people and be right. And I want to approach it from a point of love and just respect and compassion for motherfuckers because I know that this is hard to hear. I know that this shit's really difficult to handle. I get it. But I'm not going to stand here and, you know what I mean, like lie to motherfuckers and carry water for the Republicans or the Democrats or fucking anybody in general. I want the truth and I want us to have real solutions based on actual truth and like what we really want. And I'd like to go back to having a community again, like the idea of like because I talked to a dude the other night about fucking, you know, defunding the police thing. And they go, oh, man, I heard crimes all crazy. And I'm like, bro, nobody's like the crime is not crazy anywhere in America. Let's be real. Right. Like if you grew up in the fucking 90s, you saw real crime. Right. This is fucking nonsense. It's just garbage. And the fact that like they go, oh, let's defund the police. It's terrible. You know, fucking they're going to have people out here fucking shooting people and selling drugs. I'm like, yo, look you have more of a community when you're relying upon each other and there's nobody coming to help you, right? And that's not a bad thing. I say abolish police because I, 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 I hate the state. I hate the state. That's all cops are, just put shoulders in the fucking state. I agree with you. I know, man. Over right here. Like, imagine imagine having a neighborhood where you can get together with your fucking, with your fucking neighbors and drink a beer and not have to worry about bullshit. Imagine. Imagine having the right to protect yourself and the people you care about. Yeah. Imagine imagine and having I, a neighborhood man, where can't... like, yo, you know your neighbors and you're not gonna use them as a fucking cudgel. You're not gonna use the police as a cudgel to make them do what you want. Basically and, and... my mom's home village back in Belize. Right? Mom's like yo, village. That's... Everybody knew her. That's how you build community, right? And this, into this yeah. individuality bullshit of like going, oh man, everybody should be like, and this one dude, he was like, you should be responsible for yourself and, you know, those people should make better decisions. And I'm like, bro, like when motherfuckers is financially incentivizing people to do bad shit, they're going to do bad shit. It's or a basic thing. goes for that. Imagine the weak in certain cities having the right to defend themselves by carrying the weapons they can have to defend themselves. Yeah. That's the mental, right? You know, and like that's that's where I get down to with shit is like, yo, let's have these conversations in an honest, open, and loving manner and not hate each other and get on this partisan fuckery, right? Because like it's unnecessary as a whole. You know, we don't have to fucking stand here and be right wing and left wing and all this shit. We can talk about community oriented solutions because like, you know what? You don't have to have the same solution as somebody in fucking, you know, I mean, L.A. or New York that you do in podunk fucking Kansas. You know what I mean? It's completely different cultures, <sighs> completely different people. What works for a city does not work for a community. There we go. It's a basic thing. I understand we're all humans, but you know what? Like, yo, when you're packed in like fucking sardines in a city... <clears throat> the way you live and be reliant upon other individuals and band together, like deal with, you know, fucking your sewage and your fucking trash and all these things is a whole different animal than if you live in a community where like I literally have to buy trash bags in order to get my trash taken out. Right. Like not like at the store. I mean, like I have to like buy a trash bag from the borough if I want my trash taken out from the fucking from like a garbage man. Right? It's a different way of living. Like, the way I live is completely different and foreign to other people. And it works for us. Right? Like, yo, $3 a bag isn't killing us a week. You know what I mean? So, like, you burn off your fucking, you know I mean, your paper and shit. And then you fucking take all your, like, fucking food waste and you put it in a fucking bag and it all fits in one. And you put it out every fucking Sunday night. It's a basic thing. But it's a different way of living <clears throat> than compared to somebody who has a dumpster out back that everybody just throws their trash in and nobody's really responsible for it but the landlord or the motherfucking borough or the fucking city or whatever. Anyway, yo, look, man. It's been about an hour, so I'm going to shut this bitch down. Like, yo, it is what it is. I'm Tom Pete's Pino News. You know the deal. Fucking like this content. Become a patron. Hit the link in the motherfucking description. You know what I mean? Check me out. You know what I'm saying? On Odyssey. Check me out on all these other fucking platforms and shit. And make sure you, you know what I'm saying? Come join the Discord. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Hit that fucking notification bell. Motherfucking click all. It's important. Peace.